uh, the uh, one fellow said that nobody would come to me, his guys, because like he said, he's, he's probably just 65 and just recently retired. And he said, the guys wouldn't come to me with their problems. And I said, why not? I always helped anybody. When he, he said, well, it was a macho sort of thing. I said, what's macho about asking for help with heat transfer? And he said, you were so pretty. They didn't, <laughs> they didn't want to come and have you to have to tell them how to do something. Hmm. I think that's so funny. One of the things we didn't talk about was one of your jobs in ASME was to, to uh, uh, help young people. You've I've, been a, I've always done that. You've, you've been able to help a lot of young women in, in engineering, right? Well, how, how did you do that? I, well, I, it, it, it does, to me it doesn't matter whether it's girls or boys, either way. If they've got bright young minds, I, uh, I have a tendency, they don't even know it, to give them little problems to solve, to see, <laughs> to see how, how they're doing, and, uh, and to try to uh, mainly just give them advice on how to be the only girl in, a, in with a bunch of guys, and the main way to do it is just be one of the guys. One of my cohort. At, at the General Engineering Lab had two daughters, and one daughter wanted to become an engineer, and she was going to Union College, and she was doing poorly in school. And so my friend and his wife, who was also my friend, invited us up for dinner. You know, it was a, a thinly veiled excuse. <laughs> and uh, so we talked to Susan. We said, what's the problem, Susan? And she said, well, I have all this homework and all these labs and everything and everything. I want to go out with my friends, and so my work doesn't get done, and so she was failing school and everything. And I said, you're hanging out with the wrong people. And she said, what do you mean? And I said, hang out with engineers. And she said, well, they're all guys. And I said, so? Hang out with the guys. And she did, and she graduated and became a very good engineer. But the, the mindset that she had to hang out with girls and, and they didn't have much work to do, and she had a lot to do you know, studying to do, and it wasn't getting done. Uh, once she started hanging out with engineers, then everything was fine, and she was a good engineer. You have served as a model for a lot of young women. How does that make make you feel? Well, I never set out to do that. It just it just happens because I was on the front of the wave, I guess you might say. I was a, really a very early, uh, and I have no idea why I wanted to be an engineer other than what I've already described to you. Uh, it's just... Uh, uh, it, it's going to make you feel good though, right? I guess. <laughs> You've helped a lot of young women. I have, I suppose. I hadn't thought of it that way. It's just uh, just doing my thing. And if what I do gives them some inspiration to say, golly, if she can do it, I certainly can do it. Why, that's, that's okay, that's good. What do you think is the main stumbling block for women in, in engineering and science today? I think the stumbling block is mainly in, in their own minds. I, I hear young women say, oh, well, you know, they have all these problems that, uh, and they're looking for somebody else to uh, solve them for them, and they should just, if they have, just have the courage of their convictions and go ahead and do what they want to do. Don't wait for somebody else's approval to say that's okay or to help you. Just go do it. And I don't. Were you one of the people outraged when Larry Summers, president of Harvard, made a statement about women and science and math? I don't get outraged about anything. People are who they are, you aren't going to change them. And just stay away from them, people like that. Don't go near them. <laughs> uh, he lost his job over it. Yeah, there. should. <laughs> <laughs> but I don't get upset about uh, by those things. I think, for the most part, I didn't have to deal with that. I don't know why. I had one professor in, in school, and only one that I can think of, that said, uh, you know, why don't you stay home and save your father's hard-earned money? He obviously didn't want really? a girl. But that was just one. The guys, the classmates were wonderful. They were married. They had young kids of their own and wives. They treated me like a kid sister. So I don't have any horror stories to tell you. I wish I did. Or, and, and maybe I was just too busy doing my own thing to even notice when people weren't nice to me. <laughs> I don't know. But I don't have any... Uh, 
uh, bad feelings about people holding me back, not letting me do things. And I wish some more young women would have that mindset uh, that instead of waiting for approval or somebody to say it's okay or to help them, uh, I don't know where that, that comes from. Probably mothers and aunties. <laughs> That's what I used to... I can remember one time talking to a whole room full of young women and their mothers were there too. And mother was saying, oh, well, the, my daughter, you know, goes to engineering school and she dresses in jeans and a sweatshirt. And she doesn't look like a girl, you know, and she just looks terrible. And I said, I got to tell you, if she went to a girl's school, she'd be dressing the same way. And so they have this idea that their little girl should go to school in tutus or something. I don't know what. But to think that just because she's at the men's school, it's the jeans and the sweatshirt. I never went to a girl's school, but I would rather imagine they dressed the same. When I had my brand new RPI sheepskin in hand, I had just graduated, and the, uh, a recruiter came to campus. I believe he was with one of major oil company or something like that. But in any case, the interviews took place in the Pittsburgh building, which was a nice old staid building with Persian rugs on the floor and a desk way over there in the corner. So I appeared for my interview, knocked on the door, and the guy sitting way over in that corner said, come in. And so I opened the door and stood there and he looked down at his book and he looked up at me. He looked down at his book. He looked up and he said, Deloy? And I said, yes. He said, little girl, what are you doing here? <laughs> and so if I ever write a book, it's going to be, little girl, what are you doing here? He said, I've got a daughter about your age and I wouldn't want her working in my dirty old factory. So I turned to leave. He said, oh, no, come on in. I'd like to talk to you. So I had a social visit with him. He closed his book, wouldn't even talk about a job. Talked about his daughter and what she was going to do. And she wasn't going to, you know, how come did I want to be an engineer, blah -de blah But that's the reaction that I pretty much have gotten most of my life was, little girl, what are you doing here? But I was a good engineer. That's what made the difference.